Hello, my name's Matt Denton, this is Mantis Hacks, and this is part five of my Dio Droid build. So just a quick recap, this was my version of Michael Badley's version one Dio uh, design. Uh, and if you haven't been watching the series so far, make sure you go back and take a look at the other four uh, episodes and that'll explain how I've got to this point so far. If you enjoyed this video or indeed others on my channel, such as my giant 3D printed Lego kits, then please subscribe. Uh, if you're thinking of building your own Dio droid, there is now a Facebook group and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. In this video I've been mostly concentrating on the head mechanism because I was fairly happy with the lower half and the body and the way that was working but the head mechanism had way too much slop, way too much play in it uh, and that was partly due to the servos that I was using and also some of the mechanical design so I've gone back and revisited that. The first thing to do really is to take this head apart so I can show you what I've changed inside. see here the head uh, roll servo which is now a Dynamix or AX series servo. Uh, originally I was using the XL320 servos by Dynamix or, but there was a little bit too much mechanical play in them. Uh, the benefit was that they were nice and light compared to these because I want to keep as much weight off the head as possible but this is a bit of a compromise uh, just to get that head nice and stable rather than wobbling about whilst he's driving around. So originally I went with an AX12A Dynamix servo and they worked fine but um, the gearboxes in them are really noisy and the yaw motor in particular which is this one up here was uh, so loud combined with this cone head which is acting like a speaker that uh, I couldn't really put up with it so I thought I would try an AX18 because I had one hanging around. It has more power, more speed and is a lot more expensive but it's also quieter and it has um, made quite a difference for the head, um, for the rotate noise now. Um, one other thing I did try is I actually mounted the servo on a little rubber shim, which was uh, 3D printed in um, NinjaFlex. I don't know how much difference that really made. Uh, if I'm really going to go um, to town on noise dampening, then I could pack some foam around it, and really the rubber shim should be maybe some neoprene, something more uh, compressible. But the most important thing is it's got rid of the mechanical slop in the servos so the head immediately became more rigid. The next thing that I took a look at was the electronics inside of the head because they needed sorting out and what this is doing right here is uh, this is the little Lynx Motion 2 IO module and this is a Lynx Motion 2 amp uh, 5 volt regulator. Uh, now the 2IO module is basically a little bit like an Arduino uh, Nano with a limited amount of pins on it um, but it's basically looking at the uh, serial bus that's coming up from the body and the serial bus in the body is for the Lynx Motion servos that I'm using the LSS bus um, but in the head of course I'm using Dynamics for servos so what I've got this little board doing right now is a bit of code I've written which uh, takes the Lynx Motion serial bus and converts it to the Dynamics or serial protocol so then I can talk to Dynamix or servos on the Lynx Motion bus. And then the 2 amp uh, 5 volt power supply is to supply power for the servos for the antennas on the back of the head. Uh, and that same little 2IO uh, module is also running those servos as three output pins. And there's also a software serial port on here, which is another one of the output pins, which is running the sound module board, which is sort of down inside of there somewhere. I'm going to put the head back on now and just fire it up and move it around just so you can see the difference it's made having these uh, these Dynamix or AX series servos in there. The way to get this back together is just to feed the cables back through that servo, through the neck grommet and then push the neck grommet down. And then attaching the head isn't too bad actually. So basically Dynamix or bracket here which is a standard Dynamix or bracket 
two screw points in the front and the back. So it's a case of lining up the bracket over the uh, Dynamix or servo and just winding the screws into the back of the neck and to get to the front screws just spin the head all the way around, turn the around and you can get to the other side. So I just need to power DO up here and then uh, get the transmitter. So here's the two new servos in place. There's our head roll and there's our head rotate or yaw. So it's nice and fast with that AX18 servo in there. And the sound isn't too bad. The back isn't on yet, so that will uh, deaden some of that sound. But I'm fairly pleased with that at the moment. Like I said, I'd rather have kept the weight down a little bit because it does help when tuning and uh, turning speeds can be a bit faster. I'm pretty happy the way that, with the way that's moving. So um, for now, I think I'll leave it at that. Let's have a look at the back of the head, what I've done here. So um, originally I printed these um, little antenna servo mounts, which go straight onto the servos. And I didn't really think about how I was going to attach the antenna. So I just left some um, sort of holes in these parts and I printed a part that just pushes in and glues in place. And then I printed these in uh, Ninja Flex, these rubber parts. The antenna pushes into this end like so, and then you get a little bit of flex in the rubber. And right now the antenna is just a piece of KNS brass, it's two millimeters. I'll probably run a piece of heat shrink, white heat shrink tube down it, just so that it's the right kind of color and easier to paint. Basically this is supposed to be glued onto there, and then the antenna pushes into there and is easily removable. There's one slight problem with this um, uh, brass uh, bar in that it is quite heavy. When it wobbles like this, it sometimes gets that servo into an oscillation. So I might have to try and find something lighter. I mean, plastic would be fine. I just couldn't find anything uh, in my shed. I'm going to put this back on the back of the head and uh, show you these antennas, how I've got them operating. So first of all, I'm just going to attach the three servo cables. And I've also added these little, um, CAD these parts up and glued them to the head to give three attachment points because I had no way of attaching the head. It was currently just screwed in temporarily. It's okay, once you get the first one started, there we go, that one's in. And then just attach the antennas. So, what I've got on the controller at the moment, I've just got this um, little rotary knob on the top here. And I have that rigged just to uh, control those antennas. There we go, we can just uh, splay them apart. Now I can show that uh, slight issue with the weight of this one here. It just gets into a bit of oscillation now and again. There we go. So that just needs a slightly lighter antenna on it, I think, and that will sort that out. But the other thing I wanted to do was give these some life to themselves. And this is going back to my technique of free animation. Um, so what I've done is uh, I've picked up the uh, IMU, the sensor, that's um, picking up the motion of the of, of um, Dio and feeding that into the antenna. So when he accelerates, they kind of pull in and then enlarge again when he stops. Now it's quite slight at the moment, but you can probably just about see them doing something there as I manually move him back and forwards. And I can, of course, exaggerate that. I've kind of just playing with the tuning at the moment. But it's just so the uh, antennas kind of stay alive without actually having to puppeteer or anything. Um, there you go, there's that oscillation I need to sort out. Yeesh. <laughs> and I think I've found some uh, antennas that are going to work better. One millimeter solid brass bar, which is quite nice because it's kind of a little bit more flexible. I'm going to uh, put them on to DO and see if it's got rid of that uh, oscillation problem. Another thing that I've decided, I think it's going to be better with these antennas if I glue the antenna into the rubber mount and then the way to take them off is just to pull the rubber mount off rather than taking the antenna out of the rubber. Right, let's have a look. How's this behaving now? Hmm, well, still got a little bit of an issue there. I feel like I've got to fix this before I move on because it's really annoying me. Yeah, got to fix that. And I made a slight alteration inside of the head just to stop that oscillation. Uh, it's a pretty dirty hack, 
Um, there's better ways to do it. I would like to replace these servos because I'd like to get more resolution. I'll show you what I've done. It's really quick and dirty, but it kind of seems to be working. So I've basically just taken a piece of uh, neoprene, adhesive back neoprene, and I've squashed it up against the back end of this servo here. Uh, and all that does is adds a little bit of friction onto the uh, servo when the servo has really no load on it at all, but it has a spring effectively, the, the antenna's acting like a spring. Um, so yeah, just adding a little bit of friction to the servo uh, just dampens that uh, oscillation right out. I've got to do it to these two yet. I think I'm pretty happy with that now. I might still play with that uh, free animation, maybe increase that a bit, but it's working quite nicely. But for now, I think I'm going to move on and show you the next modifications that I've done uh, inside of the body. So while I was making this video, I realized I needed a part and that was a stand for Dio to sit on. And this is it here. And it took me about two hours from CAD to printing and finished item. And I actually went off and made a video about how to do that. And I'll put a link to that video in the description below or up here somewhere. With the axle clamp inside of Dio, which I was having issues with, and that's the uh, clamp that drives the head pitch here. And basically I printed a part in PLA. This is the PLA version here. I found that sometimes it broke in half. It would tend to warp a bit because I'm really clamping down on this um, because basically it's a split collar design and clamps onto the axle. So the, the torque is transferred through friction. So you need it nice and tight. So I had broken a couple. So I printed it in nylon with SLS technology, so it's really nice and tough. And that seemed to be surviving pretty well now. There is still some issues with it in that fact that you can still back drive this neck. So that's basically acting like a clutch now, that clamped part. But one of the benefits of having this clutch mechanism is I've had a few accidents where um, Dio has fallen onto his face. But what happens is that the clutch just gives and the, uh, the head gets pushed backwards. Now I do think the clutch could still be a little tighter, so I might play around with that a bit, might change this design slightly, but otherwise I'm gonna leave that function in for now um, because it doesn't seem to lose position in normal operation, only in a crash. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, when I was sorting out the neck servos, I was trying to get rid of all this play and wobble in the head because it just looked terrible when Dio was driving along. And part of that problem is also the mechanism that's going down through to the servo inside the body that drives the neck pitch, which is this here. I was looking at these two joints here, and you can see if I just hold this stationary at the bottom, there's quite a lot of play in that. Now, it doesn't look like much, but when everything as it is added up, you get a lot of movement in the head. The joint at the bottom here is an M3 bearing, uh, going into this plastic part with what I had was just an M3 bolt going through the bearing. But of course M3 bolts aren't really designed to go through bearings and uh, there's an awful lot of slop in that part. So that's not very good for a start. So that's the first thing I addressed and to do that I found I had a, um, a, a, th a three millimeter dowel pin but this isn't just a normal dowel pin because most uh, steel dowel pins are oversized for a bearing. So this is a proper H8 tolerance or H7 tolerance, I can't remember now. Anyway, the point being is that it's a perfect fit in the bearing and there's no slop in it anymore. So that got rid of the, the play in the bottom joint. And then the top joint, the bearing inside of the top of the joint, and inside that bearing I had this little plastic cup. The, the hole in the, the uh, cap, the plastic cap, was actually way too loose for the screw. We all have done is reprinted that part with a much tighter tolerance and then I've actually drilled it out using a 2.9 mil drill so it's a good fit. Putting all that back together I can actually reduce the play in that mechanism uh, quite significantly. So there's no wobble in that mechanism now. Uh, so the only play left, that bit there, is basically what's going through the shaft down to the back of the servo which is the head pitch servo and that's play in the gearbox and a little bit of give in the servo itself. And that's partly because I've detuned the servo slightly when it's in this power down mode. The proof is going to be in the pudding when I test it later on and hopefully there's not too much uh, wobble left in that head. The last modification I've done is inside of DO and the electronics and that is that I've replaced the standard um, 
Spectrum satellite receiver with a slightly better version, which is basically got some telemetry built onto it. Problem was that every time uh, I powered up, this receiver would go into bind mode, which is really annoying. And I have to rebind it every time. And that was because um, when the Arduino powered up, the um, serial input line was being pulled low. And that's how these are put into bind mode. So I actually had to add a transistor to switch the power on and off for this receiver so that after I'd done the initial power up, I could then power the receiver up when I knew that the receive line was in, a, was in the correct state, which is active high. Telemetry display on the uh, battery side of the DC-DC converter. So it gives me a voltage feedback, which is nice and easy to read. And it'll also do minimum and maximum voltages and stuff like that. So you can see if the voltage is dipping. Right now I'm gonna put DO back together and uh, test them out and then take them for a spin. Well, it feels like it's driving pretty nicely at slow speeds, but I uh, don't have much room here on the table and I don't want to drive them off the edge. So I'm going to take them downstairs where I've got more room and give them a full test. Well, I'm very pleased with the way that this uh, DO project has turned out. I will be making tweaks to the software, but I'll probably be doing most of those updates on the DO Builders Facebook group page. And don't forget, there's a link to that in the description. There will be one more episode, which will be uh, painting and finishing DO, but I need a special guest for that. And of course, right now we're all in lockdown. So until next time, keep yourself safe, keep yourself making, and uh, of course, please subscribe if you've enjoyed these videos. Bye.